Hi, my name is Sarah Van Aken. I am the president of Kathy Davis Studios, and I'm here today with our founder, Kathy Davis, in her studio. And we are talking about her creative and business journey, which started with a dream and an office in the corner of her bedroom and has become the top social expression brand in the industry. Hi. Hi, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to my studio. Thanks. I love coming here. It's uh, so inspiring to be here. <laughs> Thank you. So Kathy Davis Studios started over 27 years ago. Mm -hmm. I remember it well. <laughs> like it was yesterday. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about, um, about that dream and the vision that you had when you started this. Um, I think the dream has been there since childhood, really. I always liked drawing and that sort of thing, but I never had the confidence, especially when I got into high school and saw the talent that would sit around me, you know, and I just thought, well, maybe that guy could go into art. So I've always loved art, but I kind of buried it and um, pursued a career in teaching. And I taught elementary school for six years. And then I thought, if I'm going to teach, I'd like to teach something that I love. And I always loved art. So I went back and got a master's degree from Kutztown University mm -hmm. in art education and taught art at the high school level, which was really quite fun and fulfilling. Uh, I loved working with that, that level of talent. And then... Um, did that until I had my two kids and I left teaching. And there was just something in me that always wanted to, to work for myself in some sort of a creative way. But at the time, I really didn't know what it was going to be because I liked everything. I liked painting, I liked pottery, I liked textile design. And um, so I left teaching and did some freelance work at home, but on a very small scale, because with two little kids, um, those nap times are just not long enough. Mm. And, um, and then I went through a divorce. So it was um, an awakening to be a single mom with two young kids, and uh, everyone expected me to go back to my teaching career. And there was just something in me that was like, ah, maybe this is the time where I need to kind of pursue that dream and bring it into the forefront because I certainly had the determination to do something important with my life that would benefit my family and myself. And so I looked into many things and the greeting card thing seemed to rise to the top for me. I mean, one that's one of the most inspiring parts of your story is that at a time of great challenge, you didn't take the easy way out. Mm. Do you look at it that way? You know, it wasn't even a choice for me. Mm. It was almost um, something that I needed to face whatever fear there might have been in holding back. I mean, I was in my mid-30s, so it was time to either decide to pursue that or stop talking and thinking mm. about it. Um, so it really was something that I was determined to do, even though some family members and friends were really trying to talk me out of it because of the uh, insecurity of the whole thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it, it's really a, um, a one card at a time and your work has to be tested. And it took me quite a number of years to build up to when I actually started my company in 1990 mm -hmm. as a full-time effort. Wow. So did your vision evolve over those years? I mean, you know, you kind of jumped in and um, how has it changed maybe today and how you view it than it did all those years ago? Well, it was sort of an accident that I got into greeting cards. Um, it really wasn't in the forefront of my mind at all. In fact, I thought I wanted to be a serious painter, but I realized that in order to make a living, that would be a pretty uphill climb. So I thought I have to do something that has commercial impact. And at the time I was making Christmas cards from our family to send out and I would do the calligraphy on the envelopes and one of my friends said you should look into that you mm -hmm. you might have something there and I said I don't have a clue I mean where do you start and she said well you know there's these trade shows in New York the National Stationery Show why don't we go and check it out and so um, I did, and I was overwhelmed when I first saw all of the talent that's out there. Um, but 
I came back and I just thought, I don't know though, maybe it's worth a try. Mm -hmm. I think I might want to do that. So I went back with some renewed vigor and, um, but it really has evolved. It's still evolving. I mean, every stage of the game has evolved. It's not like I went into this and I envisioned, oh, this is gonna be my company and we're gonna build this team and we're going to license. Um, it really was a process of one thing kind of inspiring the next. And that's kind of how I like to do my artwork as well. Yeah. I do wanna ask you a lot about creative, but um, a couple more business questions. What has been the biggest challenge for you over the years? Uh, I think for me, the biggest challenge has been balancing the different mm -hmm. things that I need to do. Um, certainly my balance between my life as a mom and as I'm now happily married, mm -hmm. uh, have been for 20 years, but so balancing the personal and the business is one thing because when you work for yourself, you really never stop working. Um, but I think the other balance within the business has been early on, I did everything and, you know, switching from the left to the right side of the brain and, you know, doing the budgets and then having to create a new line or write copy that's meaningful. Uh, I always found that really tricky. Yeah. So if you could um, offer one lesson that you've learned about business. Um, I have two. Um, one of the lessons that I learned, actually, I feel like I just went into it with this um, gut feeling, is that I know what I'm good at and I know what I'm not good at or not interested in. And I knew that I needed to have um, some sound financial advice and some sound legal advice. So right from the get-go, I hired an accountant and a, a lawyer to help me with contracts and that sort of thing. So I always think that um, you need to play to your strengths. And it's really important, especially for an entrepreneur, because you get pulled into everything. And that was some advice I got early on, is you're gonna be asked to do everything. So you have to always keep in mind, why did you start that business? And what do you want to do, be doing with your time? So that's one thing. But I think the other is that as your business grows and you bring people into it, um, managing people is a whole different animal. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've always um, found that as a real challenge as well. Yeah. You know, wanting to be a good boss and having a, a great place to work is important to me, but um, I still want to be the artist. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so speaking of your art, um, you know, as we're sitting uh, here in front of some of your new work, uh, which is more abstract mm -hmm. than what you started with in greeting cards. Um, one of the most unique things about what you've always done and the company you created is that it's not just art, right? Mm -hmm. A greeting card is a vehicle to create connection between two people. And so just as beautiful as the art is, the mm -hmm. message, the editorial, as well as the hand lettering on the cards have become the hallmarks of your brand. So tell us a little bit about um, about the, those components, the mm. editorial components, mm -hmm. that connection that's created with when a greeting right. card is given. Um, well, there's a couple things that I wanna mention. One is when I first started freelancing, um, I met some companies at the stationery show, took some samples, and then it's always a process of send your work in, we'll review it, we'll test it, and then if it works, we'll give you more. And so every company that I freelanced for had a completely different way of working. Some um, gave you a very specific, um, they gave you the copy and they asked you to, to do an illustration and sometimes they'd tell you exactly what they wanted in that illustration. Mm -hmm. And I quickly uh, learned that that didn't fulfill my creative mm -hmm. needs at all. The company that I went with, um, I, I ended up getting an exclusive contract with is Recycled Paper Greetings, who I worked with for almost 20 years before now I work with American Greetings and it's all one big happy family. But um, I liked Recycle because they wanted the whole thing. They would tell you the general caption that they needed and then they would ask you to come up with the concept to write the copy and to do the art. Mm -hmm. And that really felt good to me. I never thought about the writing component when I went into it. I just thought, 
of creating art mm -hmm. for cards. But it ended up that the writing came somewhat naturally to me. Um, I'm not trained as a writer, but I just wrote from my heart the mm -hmm. way I would want to speak to someone. And I think that um, simplicity of the way I communicate when I write struck a chord, luckily. And mm -hmm. I think being able to do both the art and the editorial, as well as the hand lettering, is why I think uh, I was able to find success. Mm -hmm. And what, I mean, the value of that connection, like what does that mean to you after you look back on this amazing history and you see 27 years of helping people create this connection? I mean, we sell over 100,000 greeting cards a day. And sort of the impact of that and the ability to, to really provide something um, that's so meaningful to people. Mm -hmm. How does that? It, it blows my mind. Um, it's one of my favorite things about what I'm doing. And it's ironic because early on, as I said, I wanted to be a painter. And I really thought that that fine art was better, you know, that that was a higher level and something that I aspired to. But as I got involved in doing the cards and I would hear from people that, oh, you said just what I wanted to say, or this card was perfect for so-and-so, or you inspired me with that. I'm like, wow, this mm -hmm. is awesome that I'm able to do something from my heart that actually other people are using and it's making a difference. So I felt like I, I won the lottery. Mm. <laughs> and so how has, you know, I know um, from working with you over, gosh, these almost four years that you're very inspired by travel and um, lots of different things, but how has your inspiration or where you get your kind of creative juices changed and, and over the years or how is it the same? Um, it's funny because when I started, I was so determined to make this work. Um, and I would do all of this art and it was laying all over the floor in my condo at the time. And my dad would come over and he would, they were all excited that this seemed to be working and nobody thought it would. And he would get nervous. He'd say, uh oh, are you out of ideas yet? Have you run out of ideas yet? And the interesting thing, and I think, you know, most people working in any creative field will tell you that the more you do, the more inspired you get. And, you know, one thing leads you to another. Um, but I've always been interested in, um, in all art forms. I love to go to museums. I love nature. Most of my work is floral or something inspired by nature. And so that has always been a big inspiration. And my own relationships, you know? I mean, I always start with my own relationships when I'm writing, and then I think about other people I know. And so that's also a good inspiration for me.